the one last thing I wanted to show you since we're playing with water is uh, my setup here for my water going in. I have a shutoff valve here and then one of these uh, RV water filters which I think are really good. And uh, then I have uh, Watt's adjustable uh, pressure regulator. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting it down to 25. Uh, I do have a pressure, pr pressure regulator on the hose where it connects up to the water supply. So I have one there that cuts it down to 45. Then here again when it goes into the trailer I'm cutting it down to 25 because I don't really feel you need like 40 pounds or whatever going in the trailer. 25 seems fine to me. And uh, then I'm using this uh, spring which comes with the air with the water filter because take a lot of the pressure off this fitting. The whole thing can kind of almost stand up on the ground here so it's actually easier. Now I'll turn the water supply on and uh, you can watch the gauge go up. Now you'll notice it's staying pretty low, only, and only at 10 pounds right now because we're filling the tank. So we really won't know what the proper pressure is in the trailer until the tank is full. And if we come back here, you should be able to hear it going in there. You can also kind of do the pressure relief valve here, take off a little bit of the air build up. You can get the air building up in the line here. You keep this open, eventually water starts shooting out of it. But it is a good way to bleed off the air as the tank's filling up. Because what's happening is that, you know, there's that six gallon tank in there and the water is just filling up in it. Okay, now if we look at our nifty watts here, we're sitting at 25 pounds here. So that's 25 pounds from here on into the trailer. Adjustable Watts has done its job uh, kicking it down another 15 psi. Puts a lot less stress on the inside fittings on the trailer. Now you also want to run your uh, faucet down after you fill your water tank a little bit to purge the water out of them. One of the benefits of going to uh, 25 pounds psi instead of 40 is that it doesn't blast out at you like if you got 40. It's almost explosive the way it comes out. Uh, maybe this one will show you a little more. But we want to do this for both lines now. We want to do it for the hot and the cold water. The cold water looks pretty clean. Or pretty the hot should have probably more. Now I don't have it on. I just have the red opening over there. But that's like really, really explosive when it's 40 psi, but not too bad at all at 25. There's a pretty air, big air bubble here. We've got absolutely nothing coming out. But that's good. That's what you want. Because what's going to happen is it's going to uh, just, you know, percolate on up as it should. So one thing you can do here is take the screen off the bottom here, just in case there's some little tiny particulates. Maybe I can get it off here. Right? And kind of clockwise, yeah, comes off. And that will, and here it makes a little different sound when it's off. It'll eventually come out once all the air is uh, out of it. Not very exciting. I'll stop here. The only thing that's a little anemic at uh, 25 pounds psi is that you will notice the, the actual flushing your bowl fillings a little slow. Um, of course, you know, you can always uh, wash down your bowl if you make a mess of it with the, you know, the shower head up there. You can just take it down and squirt it around, which isn't a bad idea. Um, this is just another thing you want to make sure you get the water out of, uh, of the air out of, I should say. And uh, check your seal. Um, one thing the Casita doesn't do is they don't give you a shutoff valve here, which is a PEX valve I put in line here. Uh, this is kind of a really needed oversight <laughs> and so uh, we can just shut this off and when that's off now we can you know we can drain out our toilet completely any more going on here now you know in the marine industry we use a uh, thing called head lube uh, it's a special lubricant glycerin compound I'm going to dump a little in here because 
this seal is going to last a lot longer, this rubber, if it's got some uh, special uh, head lube lubrication. And that's probably another little tip. When you uh, energize your system with water pressure, it's a very good idea to run around and look for leaks in any of these PEX fittings. Um, these fittings are crimped on. You need a special tool. Um, PEX is used in the marine industry a lot. I'm not sure how really great they are, but uh, it's worth checking for leaks, especially in this uh, front connection area here. One last thing to remember is if you have the shower here, make sure you open this up and, and bleed this out too, because it's going to probably have an air bubble in there. So open that up. Do the same thing, hot and cold water leads. Let them run for a little bit. Now, uh, once we're filled up with water, we want to check, make sure there's no leaks, nothing like that. And now we're just going to check uh, gas operation of the heater, make sure it works properly. Let's go around. Bang on us before we open it, because here in Florida, you never know what's going to be inside. I'm going to turn our gas on. Turn it all the way open. Actually, you don't have to go all the way open, but I like to go all the way open because it firms up nice. 